need something to take my mind off of the kill team that I still haven't finished because I don't know why. I think it's because there's so many of them. So, this is gone. Let's... Oh. I guess we can do either this guy or this guy. Let's... Uh, let's do this guy. Yeah. Primaris Repulsor, Repulsor Executioner. I think this is the version that carries a few dudes that are Primaris Marines. So let's give them a look. It's time to build this Primaris Repulsor Executioner. Now, I learned a few lessons since my last attempt at building a vehicle and filming or recording the building of a vehicle. Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to do all the steps involved in building this guy. Um, but instead of gluing everything together, uh, I'm going to um, uh, use, well, this stuff. I'm going to use a sticky tack to hold the pieces together. Uh, and those pieces that don't need to be glued down. So um, at the end of this recording, I should have everything put together as a single model. Um, but not everything will be glued down. Uh, I'm going to use this stuff so that I can kind of, once the video is done, I can split it back apart um, into the sub-assemblies I'll use for painting. Uh, so whenever you build uh, a kit, not just from Games Workshop, but, you know, any other um, company, uh, you want to have an eye towards painting. Um, if you put everything together, it might just be that there are certain areas on the model that you can't get to, um, to uh, with with a paintbrush or a rattle can. So um, that's what I'm going to try here. Let's see if it works. Uh, I've already done the unboxing video. It should be loading into YouTube as we speak. And as that's uploading, I'm going to start working on this. So, this is the part, this is part of the flight stand, so they're using these large flight stands now, and I think that's a really good idea, because uh, those skinny lights, uh, those skinny flight stands just didn't cut it. Um, now, previous to this, I guess my only exposure to flight stands was for, like, land speeders and, uh, uh, Eldar jet bikes. I had a couple of those, and those were notorious for breaking off. And for something this beefy, uh, a wide base like this is going to be a great idea. So, uh, whoever had this thought over a Games Workshop, kudos, man or lady. Uh, this was a great idea. Uh, so, they're not going to be useful to me right now, so I'm going to stuff them down here. And now, <clears throat> I'm also going to keep an eye open for opportunities to uh, magnetize or to, to customize it so that I could, you know, add weapons or take away weapons as necessary. And so there's a couple of options, only one of which are in the turret. So, so you see this turret. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that is. That may be the laser destroyer, uh, but you can put on a plasma kind of a weapon. So you can use one of those two variants. But there's also a bunch of extra auto cannons. Um, I'm not sure about these. I'm not sure if these are extra, but there's a bunch of extra weapons that you can also um, include in your build. But some of them will cost you, and so I want to be able to have the option of including them or not including them, depending on what I'm doing. Uh, same thing goes with like these missile pods. Uh, so. Um, if you want to see how something is magnetized um, and how to prepare for that, this video will be, um, I'll approach things in that way. Alright, so we're going to start off with the very first thing. And that is the bottom of the hull some of the hull sides and some of the 
not the tracks, but the kind of the grav plating, repulsor plating, or whatever you call it, in the Warhammer 40k universe. So, it might be this stuff right here. And thankfully, these pieces are numbered. Although they may not be numbered consistently, I'm pretty sure this is this guy right here. But it says, I can't tell what the model part is. It might be 36, but this is 46. Am I looking at the right piece? Is there a 46 anywhere? I don't know. That looks like a 36. That looks like a 36. And it's attached to this. Well, not attached, but it's kind of pointing to this. What looks like the bottom plate of the entire... Um, of the entire tank. So it's like the the skid plate, if you will. Or just the bottom hull. Um, and this instruction right here says 46. So maybe I'm reading something wrong. I don't know what the deal is, but it feels wrong to me. So I'm going to proceed on the unwise assumption that Games Workshop or the printer got this part number wrong. Um, which means in a couple of minutes, I'll figure out what they meant and it'll be that this guy was wrong, not the, pe the professionals, um, as one might expect. So let's just let's just begin, shall we? So the interior of this hull has got it's got textures, right? It looks like there's like a floor grating, and uh, so you can probably do some painting in here, maybe some hatches or whatever those might be. Um, so when I looked at the box, this did not look like it had opportunities for being open, but maybe the rear hatch drops, and so you can kind of see the inside. Uh, that's not something I was expecting, um, which is neat. I mean, it certainly complicates the painting process because now, now you have to get in here and do some stuff, and who the heck knows what the inside of a tank looks like in the 41st cent, uh, millennium. Um, anyway, but just an observation. Uh, that's kind of a cool deal. So I was trying to put this together, I was trying to figure out which way was which, and I was having some trouble um, because I was holding this one incorrectly. The instruction, the instruction has it kind of flipping up like this, and I was holding it like this. Uh, and so once I figured that out, I realized there's something else about the model that reinforces that direction. So two bits of information, there's two little dots right here. To correspond to two little pegs so there are the pegs here are the dots and so they go like so now 
Uh, so it's not a snap-to-fit model, so you're going to have to, um, you know, be cognizant of that. The other thing that you'll notice is that these little tube-like structures go all the way across. If you have it, if you're holding it the wrong way, uh, it's not going to work. So uh, just a little tip as you're building this. If uh, you're new to Space Marines or new to Warhammer 40K or just new to grav tanks, uh, that's a little tip. Maybe you can avoid that mistake. Now, I'm going to glue this down because this is going to be its own sub-assembly. It could be painted on its own, so I don't have to worry about that. This is kind of its own paradigm. Normally, when you're, whenever you're assembling a model like this, the pieces kind of support each other, or they, they give, e give e themselves support. And so the glue isn't the only thing keeping them in place, typically. It's other stuff, uh, like other pieces. But I don't, I'm not going to say that the entire model is like this, but at least the elements I've seen so far, including this step, when you put the front panel of the armor um, on the vehicle, there's very little support from other pieces um, and so all that's left is the glue and so i've been using plastic glue <laughs> and um, you're gonna need something stronger so i resorted to super glue um, and i don't know i have this idea that super glue while it's a stronger bond and it's quicker it's somehow more brittle and so I tried to use plastic cement or plastic glue whenever possible but when something needs to dry and set quickly I just switch over because I have you know I don't have any clamps clamps um, and I'm not even sure what kind of clamps would work on a model like this So yeah, I don't recommend wasting your time with plastic cement, uh, at least on some like pieces like this. I'm not sure about this one. Yeah, okay, it seems sturdy enough. But this is like the third or fourth time these things have fallen off, and uh, I've had enough of that. Faux sure. show. So this piece, this front armor panel, it slots into here, so there's little tabs on the piece, and so it kind of goes like this. It's tough to see, but that's kind of how it works. But there seems to be this gap right there. I don't know if it's because I didn't put this thing in the right place. And I'm starting to think, as I look at this, that maybe I didn't. Let me see if I can't find a different spot for him. All right, so, so far as I can tell, if you want to avoid those gaps, you want to, when you glue this on, you're going to have to bend the plastic piece just a little bit and force it flush with the rest of that cylinder. So you'll see that this piece has a piece of the cylinder, this piece has another bit of it. So if you kind of force it in there and um, let it sit for a bit, you should avoid some of those cracks. It's an odd way of assembling a model, like having to push it together, which means you you almost absolutely need super glue. You can't pull that off with plastic cement. It The pieces themselves are applying tension to the seam, and they want to pull each other away. Um, 
it's not a value judgment. I'm not saying it's a, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it's unusual and something you should kind of keep your eyes open uh, for. And so I'm going to re-glue this piece because I don't have any glue up there, and I'm going to need it if it's going to stay with that tension. Kind of have to bend and let it stick to that cylinder. Just long enough for your super glue to bond and stick to your finger. Okay. So, so far, so odd. And with this model, it's very, very clear that I'm not going to be able to get away with um, temporarily putting pieces on it. Um, so, I'm going to have to figure something out there. And so, for this. There's relatively little surface area to help it bond. It's just wait, how does it go? Oh. So these these two tabs into these two slots. Like so. Okay, I see it. So I'm mean, gonna have to use super glue on this piece too because you have to glue them and kind of keep them pinched. There is a piece on top of here that closes up with that cylinder that we were talking about. I know it's hard to see. Um, so the way it wants to fit, well, now I can't. The way it wants to fit, there's a crack kind of there so you'd really want to pinch it so glue it and pinch it and then you'll end up with almost no seam there it's a little sloppy but I'm hoping the priming will take care of it because it would be easy to make a mistake like I almost made and you'd end up with cracks all over your hull and um, nobody likes to see that. You know, I thought I cleaned this flashing off, but I guess I didn't do a great job. All right. So, this is page one of the instructions. So I kept going until I got to something that was particularly interesting and noteworthy. Um, but that isn't to say that there's nothing um, tricky about it. So there's a couple of things I want to point out. So I've gotten this far. <clears throat> Basically, I've uh, added the rear hull plate where the hatch is going to go. I added this top part and this guy right here. Uh, <clears throat> now this was both straightforward and tricky. So like I mentioned before, there's no, there's really little internal supporting of stuff. Um, there's a lot of what I would call cantilevering. So there's a kind of a big piece held together by a very small surface area, which isn't necessarily uh, a horrible thing since you're not actually going to, uh, you know, get in this thing yourself. It's, it's a, it's a toy. It's a, it's a model, um, so it doesn't need a ton of structural support, um, except that, in many cases, you get a, a model that is, you know, not completely self-supporting, but it'll do it'll give itself a little bit of support uh, so that while you're gluing stuff you don't have things falling apart um, and so that isn't really the case here the other thing I want to point out is that these 
uh, both kind of this hull plate, this top hull plate, and this front hull plate. Uh, less so this bot, this back part. They're they're kind of finicky. You have to put them in, and you have to kind of squeeze them and shape them, um, which is hard to do when you've already glued stuff. Now, thankfully, Games Workshop. I hadn't noticed this detail before, and I don't know how long they've been doing this, but it kind of tells you where to glue. You see this little yellow outline, or uh, it. It, it adds yellow in a very specific in some very specific spots so it's giving you a heads up on where to where to apply the glue um, which is actually it's a neat trick because it's not always especially for this guy uh, some of the surfaces that touch each other are there so instead of you know making contact like this they'll make contact ah uh, you know what hang on I don't know it, so it's I having trouble finding a way of of uh, explaining this but instead of kind of being touching like this so right when they're parallel and so you have this flat surface touching this flat surface and you have that you know you have things there they sometimes or oftentimes uh, meet like this so it's almost like at a 45 degree angle from each other as opposed to the 90 uh, which isn't you know isn't that big a deal it's just it introduces some weirdness in the assembly process and so in order to get all the cracks to go away because so this part kind of fuses to this part um, and they fit just so and if you get it wrong you're gonna have cracks all over the place so you glue it you seat the part kind of where it goes and you start kind of fussing around with it um, until you get it in there um, it's not a complaint it's an observation and just something you should be aware of um, because it could lead to cracks uh, so like here for example I had a big one I had to like take this panel off again and re-glue it and set it down in just the right way uh, what I'm saying is it's really easy to get this wrong but it's not that difficult to fix those uh, not mistakes but assembly things so take heart it's tricky, but it's doable, and then the end result is pretty tight. Like, I don't see very many seams. I mean, you can see the seam, but it's not like the Rhino um, that I may have misassembled. Um, so, you know, kind of a good news, bad news deal. The other part of it is maybe I've misunderstood something, but before I started building this, I was pretty sure that I was going to have to paint the inside uh, you'll remember how there was that kind of that texture in there uh, with a kind of a door uh, the, the floor the I don't know the floor grating and some paneling here um, I assumed that was because this hatch or you know one of these hatches would be you know you can do open and close like on the Rhino but you can't uh, the so far as I can tell you can glue it closed or you can glue it open. And if you glue it open, um, yeah, you'll be able to see the floor in some of these hatches, but uh, unless I missed something horrible, like there's no there's no front hull wall. Like there's nothing to see once you get in there except, you know, you can totally see that there's no driver and there's no gunner. Um, hang on. So you can kind of see that there, there is nothing to see except the floor and some of the wall panels. So maybe there's something, uh, like maybe it's one of those deals where uh, this kit is, you know, obviously used for a bunch of other or a couple of other models. And so maybe the other models have like the interior details, like that hull stop that would go here. But so far, I haven't seen anything that, you know, would say, hey, look, there's a wall right here that the interior people say. So I don't have a good reason to keep this open. And 
I wouldn't want to keep it glued open. Like, I'd want the option to close it, open and close it. Um, I wouldn't just want to have, like, an open door to my moving transport. Uh, I mean, I, I guess it would be neat for, like, a diorama, but not for uh, when I'm taking it to the tabletop and getting shot up. So, I'm not going to worry now about, you know, making the assembly uh, undoable so I can get in there and paint, because I'm not going to get in there and paint. I'm going to seal everything up since... There's nothing really to see inside, and you know that's again that's not a complaint. It's, a, it's just it's just an observation, um, and that's actually when I realized that that's when I decided okay I'll just start assembling some stuff. I don't have to worry about showing people how to like keep these things apart or rebuild them or uh, you know make the sub assemblies. So far it's just one big sub assembly that I'm gonna hit with uh, primer and stuff. Uh, that's gonna change once the turret and things like that go up there. Um, and the final thing I should probably point out, um, <laughs> the instructions say to put in the flashlights or the headlamps, um, in, uh, on this front plate before you do everything else. Uh, I didn't pay that much attention, uh, because, uh, I assumed it was like the rhino where you dropped on this, this whole triangular bit and just put it on there. That's not how this works. Um. So I'm going to try to put the the headlamps in from the inside. It's going to be tricky, but uh, that's how it goes. So that'll be my next step. I'll be um, kind of continuing with the build and correcting any little minor issues that I run across, like this guy. Okay, that was not fun. Uh, I do not recommend <laughs> splitting that sequence. Uh, just do it right the first time. Get those fl uh, headlamps in there in the hole before you close it because it is no fun trying to blindly put in a glued piece. Oh, uh, okay. Just a little heads up. The little uh, square indentations on this part of the tr uh, of the tread or the the repulsor pad, they are designed to fit right into there, and so these other ones will host these guys. Now, it seems a little weird, right? Because there's nothing on here, but I'm guessing that that nothing will just glue directly onto onto that. Um, and you can tell because there's a there's a little there's a little kind of tab there that goes directly into this this slot right there. So it, when you're finished assembling them, this should look a bit like this. Hmm. Bit like that so you see what I mean about this model how about this piece is when it gets into itself it doesn't go in at a 90 degree angle it kind of it doesn't free float there's a very specific end like a stopping point to it but it's easy to kind of get it a little bit wrong because it's not a perfectly 90 degree uh, join so just something to keep in mind I wonder if this is going to be a problem. Let 
you see how these repulsor pads sit on top of that hull? Which makes sense, of course, but I bet you that means painting is going to be very difficult in there. And I'm wondering if I shouldn't leave the uh, adding of the tr of the repulsor pads till the end. And I think that's what I'm going to end up doing because this is going to be more trouble than it's worth. Okay, so... Okay, I guess they're staying on. Uh, I can't yank them off because the piece that it rests on, it rests on, so it's kind of like, see it kind of comes off. Uh, I can glue that down a little bit more. All right. So those pads are going to be painted kind of gross. This really should be its own sub-assembly. All right, but I'm not going to make that same mistake with these side pads. So I want to get in there and paint the hull. So I know what I'm going to do there. Let's get the door attached, shall we? Gluing it down, I mean, gluing it in this orientation. So you can see kind of the texture here, the texture kind of inside the hull of that rhino, of the, <laughs> of the repulsor for the transport function. But um, you don't get to, I mean, you, you could mod it, I suppose. You could magnetize it and so you can open it and close it. But that just seems, just seems like a lot of work with, I mean, I don't mind a little bit of work. But it seems like a lot of work with minimal return, so uh, I'm just going to seal this shut. That way, nobody sees, you know, the, the floorboard of this repulsor, like, littered with Taco Bell wrappers and cans of RC Cola. Uh, that'll be the Space Marine's little secret. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to assemble these at all um, because I don't want to get them all lost. So I'll leave them on the sprue and keep going. This is a nice touch. Um, so this Imperial Aquila, on the back side of it, it has these two little slots, these little tabs that go into this part of the tank. I don't know that it was necessary. Like, this is a pretty broad area if you're going to glue that down. Uh, it's gonna stick. That's not gonna be a problem. Um, but it's a nice attention to detail, I guess. Even if it's even if it's not necessary. Although if you decide you want to do like one of these and say, no, I don't want my Imperial Aquila right there in the middle, like every other person. Um, while well, you've got some some holes in your armor. I mean, they're not. You could like make it part of the armor, but. Uh, I just thought I'd point it out. It's 
interesting. It, it's indicative that someone's giving these a lot of thought. And that's always appreciated, even if we don't always agree with the results. Anything to see. Oops. Without anything really to see in there, um, it really doesn't make any sense to, you know, try to model it so that the door, the hatch, opens and closes. Uh, there is some detail here in the sides, some detail here at the bottom. There's there's gobbledygook up top, and there's nothing there's nothing in in the back of this troop carrying compartment. Assuming that's what it's going to be, like if it's, I know there's some variants that'll carry some, and maybe others that don't carry uh, troops. I'm not entirely sure, but there's nothing. There's no back wall. There's no back hull, so you can see that there's no pilot driving this thing. So. Um, yeah, it's going to be shut down. I find myself doing a lot more uh, flash removal on this model. Um, and I'm thinking that, yeah, I think, uh, Games Workshop is, um, uh, losing out on, on a bit of an opportunity. Uh, and here's what I mean by that. So there's models like this where there's just flashing everywhere. And then if you want to get it to make, if you want to make it look decent, you have to spend some time buffing and sanding. Um, now, I know Games Workshop sells, uh, has a line of, like, hobbying tools, uh, but do they have sanding tools, like jeweler files, um, sandpaper, buffing sticks? Uh, what if, my dear viewers, what if they decided, you know what, we're going to launch a, a line of... Kind of like nail buffers like this, but maybe thinner, maybe a variety of sizes. Um, and here's the trick. Here's the trick. Because you can get these anywhere for pretty cheap, right? They sell them for not that much more expensive than what you get over there. Um, you're going to need them for your, um, you know, for your models with all this flashing. And right now, their price point is too high. People can easily go, ugh, I'll just get a, you know, a non-gamer's one somewhere else. But if they're cheap enough, they go to their store, like, eh, maybe throw a couple in each of the boxes uh, that these things come in, you know, for a limited time, just to promote them. And then they're sold individually. I don't know. Could be Games Workshop is leaving money on the table. And they need us obviously to tell them how to take more of our money <laughs> exciting so also here i just want to point out that i that i know i'm doing this not incorrectly but i'm doing this suboptimally in that uh, this is the first piece that i've chosen to add even though I know it's going to interfere with painting. Uh, these nozzles interfere with primer getting back here and me getting a brush in there. So already, I'm going to I'm going to have a less well painted model than I could have, uh, and I'm doing it because uh, it's I don't see a really good way 
of temporarily adding these. Uh, and so, like, these, for example, yeah, I can add. But then there's a there's a cowling that comes on afterwards. Uh, and so there's a couple more pieces that you just have to put on. Um, and they're going to interfere with painting. So I'm just putting that out there right now. I'm giving myself an excuse to have a not awesome looking um, painted um, repulsor when this is done. I'm doing this for you. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to make some compromises. I'm compromising here in the let's get this model built. And then later on um, we can worry about the painting. I'm still not going to add these yet because it just it's a lot. Uh, it, it's a lot to not get right. Here, okay, I mean, it's unpleasant, but it's a, it's there. Uh, I will say, this thing look, feels really big. Like, this is a, the first time I've had to use the, that, um, what's the opposite of zoom? Like, when... <laughs> Uh, you have less magnification on your phone, your camera's phone, uh, your phone's camera. There we go. Um, I've had to rely on that setting almost the entire time. It just feels really big. And, yeah, just an observation, I guess. I mean, it's a bit more work to assemble your model to get it ready for painting, but you know it adds uh, it adds something to the experience. Uh, it's easy to dismiss it as unnecessarily complicated and to say, ah, why it could just be one single piece and let's go, you know, put the hole down and let's go. Um, and it's moments like that that I have to remind myself that. The Warhammer 40k and, and hobbies like this, they're not just about the wargaming, right? There's the hobbyist aspect. There's the, hey, we get to paint our miniatures and give them names and battle damage and all that kind of good stuff. Well, model building is a third part of that hobby that we often forget about. Um, it is... You know, some people aren't into it, are into 40k for the building, they're into it for the wargaming, or they're into it for the painting, but this is still part of the hobby, and, well, yeah, it's, it delays me from getting to the point, to the, to the things that I am more kind of eager to do, like the painting. Um, it's a pleasant experience in and of itself, so, um, just... I don't know, thought I needed I needed to say that um, because I felt myself kind of getting a little grumpy at this whole deal. It's like, oh, it's taking so long and so complicated, and why all these little pieces? And if it's happening to me, um, you know, someone who t tries to be a positive person um, wherever possible in this planet, um, you know, it's a it's. It's a conscious choice for me. Um, so I'm already in the practice of saying, all right, is this the worst thing ever, really, George? Or is it just this? And so, I don't know. If it happens to me, I'm sure it happens to other people. So uh, thanks, Games Workshop. You've delivered on a pleasant um, modeling experience, at least. Um, at, le at least an entertaining one or a challenging one. I don't know about pleasant, but certainly, certainly it's worth doing. Yeah. 
Uh, speaking of worth doing, I should probably start my laundry. <laughs> I'll be back with this honking beast. I am happy to report a measure of success with my efforts to magnetize. Um, <clears throat> so as you can see right there, there is the stump of the main armament. And I say stump because I've cut off a piece right there. There's a magnet, you can kind of see it right there. Um, <clears throat> and there we go. It holds its own weight and comes off and there we go. It uh, doesn't do much swiveling. Um, it seems like it's going to stay in this lowered um, configuration. Uh, it's just too heavy for the hinge, but I don't know if that's um, I guess I could add a little bit of uh, friction to that hinge and to make it kind of stick where I want it to go. Maybe a little bit of <clears throat> uh, a little bit of plastic glue, not just enough to make it stiff. I, I, I don't know yet. I, I think I'm going to leave it as it is. Um, and I've mentioned before how um, these are magnetized as well. go um, so I have th these I think these are the frag storm launch auto launchers this is the Icarus rocket pod I can swap that out with what looks like it's nominal armament and I can swap this out with uh, the heavy laser destroyer <clears throat> so I'll explain what I did a bit. So basically, I've uh, I've stacked three magnets in the barrel, and three magnets in the barrel. I did my best to kind of fill it in with uh, some liquid green stuff. Uh, it didn't harden to the extent that I wanted to harden. Uh, it wasn't hard enough, even after 24 hours of curing, to uh, resist being stuck. So whenever I pulled it out by itself, it pulled out either the magnets here or the magnets here. And I've gotten around that by using a little bit of plastic card. I, they finally came in. So I filled it in with uh, a little bit of green stuff. I just hit it with a bunch of super glue and then this plastic card I glued on top of it. And I just, once it dried, I trimmed around the edges. Uh, it looks goofy now. I believe, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure that once I prime and paint these, they won't look half as goofy. Um, so there it is, the magnetization. Uh, and I've went ahead and glued the bottom of the turret to this, well, turret. And so now you have the entire, kind of the bulk of this thing. And Oh, I also, you'll notice these magnets here, that's because I did this to the turret. So, I'm sorry, this uh, this cupola, the hatch, it has this uh, auto gun or stubber or whatever this is. I uh, magnetized it and now it snaps. It didn't really need it, but whenever I, ugh, whenever I closed the hatch, it didn't, it didn't secure, it didn't stay there. If uh, I move the tank a lot, it'll it would you know it would come right off. Or if I hit this, and there's plenty of little things on this tank that you can accidentally hit and uh, knock something over. So this thing would come loose really easily. And just just listen, just listen. Ah, that's so satisfying. It still turns. But now it's pretty secure on there. Now these aren't as secure as I would like. Uh, I used three magnets in here, but I only use one magnet here. And so they fall off kind of easily. Um, I could always go back and drill this a little further. I'm just, I don't want to 
break into the face of it. So at least for now, I'm going to leave it as it is. Maybe, maybe later I'll go back and, and refine it. But for now, it is relatively assembled. That's the turret part. Oh no, this is going to be, this is going to keep doing this. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder if there's a solution to keep it from laying down on itself. Uh, I'll have to think about that. So, that's taken care of. There's one more piece that needs that needs magnetization, I think. It's this rear turret. It'll have um, like a, a weapon in basement back here. And I think you can switch, switch that out. So I'm going to try to magnetize that as well. All right, so since I'm still going to attempt to do the magnetization video separate from the assembly video, I'm going to switch over to that. If you're interested in the building video, go check it out. If you're just interested in the magnetization video, well, let's do a little crossfade. Because uh, these really will interfere with the painting in a way. I just uh, I'm not I'm not willing to pay that price. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm just using um, this sticky tack stuff to temporarily put these boxes in place. Uh, I'm doing it just for the purposes of this video gives you a sense you know for what it's looked like what it looks like completed um, but it you know I can remove them so I can paint them uh, accurately later on so in case you're wondering what I'm doing that's what I'm about y'all I will say I really like this these details and uh, I like that you can kind of rearrange them a bit I mean it's not a ton, but you can swap them around if you tent with you tetris it up a little bit. disappointed because I can't get this turret to snap it is as far down as it'll go it's designed I think to snap so it can rotate freely but there is no such mechanism here unless I did something very wrong which is certainly possible I don't see a way of getting that all the way in So it pains me, but I'm going to have to glue that on. Uh, not right now, but once once I start painting, it'll, it'll end up getting glued. For now, I'll do something like that. And I'm interested to see how this works. Ooh, neat. I guess you glue this on or something. I guess you glue that to that and then this to that. Seems like a bad idea. Um, gluing this seems like a 
good recipe for A, breaking something, and B, making absolutely sure it's not going to fit in any of my cases. So, I'll have to figure something out with this. But for now, my tanky boy is done. Um, yeah, it wasn't a bad build at all. In fact, I, I will... I have to say, this was a bit more enjoyable than the only other vehicle I've done, which is the Rhino. Why does that look like something belongs there? Oh. Okay. I just saw the instructions and now there's nothing here. It just looks like something that would anchor here. Um, and so it was enjoyable for a couple of reasons. One of them is that there's a lot of details on this that weren't weren't included for the Rhino. I mean, the Rhino is a, a kit of its time. Has that ever been said? I don't know. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, it was, you know, fancy for its time, but it's an old, old kit. This was a relatively new kit, and, you know, technology's improved, and yada, yada, yada. There's just a lot going on. Um... And things went in, uh, I want to say, quite a bit more easy. There was a couple of clever of techniques. Um, and, like, uh, there was a couple of pieces that kind of folded in on themselves or at least kind of snapped together in a certain way. Um, there was something different about this build that I enjoyed. And the fit and finish are quite a bit better if you do it right than the Rhino. That... Isn't to say that all rhinos are like that, but certainly my experience with the rhino was like that. Now it's not perfect. There's a couple of little cracks here that, I mean, objectively, I wish they weren't there. Um, let's try this. Yeah. Objectively, I wish they weren't there. But they're much better than the rhino. That's got to be worth something, right? And some lines here. Um, so, here's another observation that I'm not quite sure, I'm not quite sure what to make of. Okay, just take a gander at the size difference. Um... I mean, what is that? Roughly 50% longer. Um, a good one and a half, two inches taller. Um, now, granted, this is a Rhino, and this is kind of a mixture of a transport and a and a and a tank, right? It's not like a heavy tank, but this isn't exactly a, you know, a, a tank either. Um, so this is like the smallest possible Space Marines vehicle. Uh, and it's uh, firstborn. This is Primaris. And Primaris, as a rule, are bigger models. Um, but the size difference here is pretty stark. Uh, I'd be curious to see how it stacks up to... Um, to a Land Raider, which I've also never seen, but I imagine it's bigger than the Rhino. Uh, how about the width? What kind of width are we talking about? Yeah, there's maybe half an inch width difference. Ooh, that just made me realize something else. Is this going to fit in my case? Let's find out. All right. Here's my Space Marine condo. And we can tell these antennas are not going to fit in this two inch bay. So the Rhino fits. I mean, it just fits. 
I can kind of scooch it off to one side and maybe throw in a couple of models uh, here. Like I could put in our Primaris Captain. Will that fit? Yeah. He'll fit in there. So I can maybe put another two characters in here. And if I magnetize them down, so you add some magnets to the bottom of this and add some magnet pads here, um, it should work fine. Uh, this Primaris tank there's just no way it is not at all gonna fit I could theoretically Ugh. this is my oh my help blaster sergeant uh, he was uh, unglued from his base that one time I had an accident with these these guys. We'll move them all aside. Well, let me see. So, he'll fit in a bay like this. How about if I do this? Okay. So the antenna are going to be a problem. The antenna may need to go. feel dirty taking them off um, but if I don't if I don't there's no way this will fit especially considering I still need to add the grav pad now it'll only add a fraction of an inch so it'll sit maybe like this but it's going to be a very tight fit. I don't know if I want to spend the money for a 4-inch bay just for this one tank. Uh, so I may have to you know, either knock these off or thankfully, you know, maybe, you know what, maybe that'll be it right there. Is... Transport it like this uh, and house the turret separately. Will the turret, yeah, the turret will fit in something like that. Ah, that just seems like such a waste of a cube. Like this cube is like 20, 30 bucks just to carry part of this one tank. All right, well. Our Primaris Repulsor Executioner uh, it's it's spendy it is pretty though I will say that ain't nothing wrong with a little shooty shoot All right, well, uh, I hope you uh, got something out of this. Uh, uh, again, if you're interested in the magnetization process, there is uh, another video uh, that covers just the magnetization. Um, I had fun building it. I wonder how much fun it'll be to paint it. And that is our next video. Thanks for watching, everybody. Peace.